What's up, everyone? It is I, the Video Game Hunter, and welcome to my new and probably a short series called Are They Playable? Where we go and take a look at some video games, and we're going to use some simple cheat devices like Action Replay, Code Breaker, Game Genie, or Game Shark, and see if certain characters that you don't normally play as, and see if they're actually playable. And the first game we're going to take a look at is Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis. So that said, let's go and take a look. Alright. The first character we're going to see if they are playable or not. Is the first hidden character in the Mortal Kombat series who would drop down every so often giving you hints on where and how to find him. Reptile. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain this. However, Reptile is not the same Reptile in the later games where he can spit acid and go invisible, but he is just a quick lazy design where they combine the colors of Scorpion and Sub-Zero along having both of their powers. So that said, the Game Genie code we're going to be using here I found at GameHacking.org posted by Big Boss Man. And the results we got is that he's mostly playable but not completely playable. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you recall that quick info I informed you guys earlier is that he is just two ninjas being put together along having both of their powers. Where the only real thing this code is actually doing is that it only changed the colors of those two ninjas to green. So you're not really having both of these characters powers, just the powers that they already originally had. So you're not really playing the full version of Reptile, but according to the game when you win a match, you are Reptile. So the next character I'm going to show you guys is something that I actually find quite surprising. And he is, in fact, 100% playable. And I really didn't know he was in the first game, and yet, here he is. New Cybot. Yeah, New Cybot. The character who I thought made his first debut as a hidden fighter in Mortal Kombat 2, after scoring 50 wins in a row on the arcade, or 25 if you're playing it on the Genesis. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know, I know what you guys are probably saying, that I'm just playing as a black version of Scorpion. Well, technically, you are correct, but if we're going by Mortal Kombat's lazy standards, then I am in fact playing as Noob Cybot. So moving on, the Game Genie code I actually found this on came from the same website, GameHacking.org. And from the same user too, Big Boss Man. Now let me note this, in the Genesis Game Genie, there is in fact only 5 lines of code for you to enter here. And this code actually has 6 lines. But here's the thing, according to this user, you only need 5 lines of code to make this work. Now you can use an emulator to use all 6 lines of this code, but I really don't think it's necessary. I'm not sure why it's there. So that said, let's move on to the next characters. So the next two characters, I'm going to show you guys to see if they are playable or not. Are the boss characters. Go and change up. Now, 
The codes that I will be using were not originally called play as so and so. They were actually originally called always fight Goro and always fight Shane Shung. Which I got these codes from gamehacking.org and gamegenie.com. So that said, obviously like the code says, you will always fight these characters in every single round if you have controller plugged in and controller port 1. But if you have it in the controller port 2, well, now you can play as the boss characters. Kinda. Okay, you can barely, just barely play as the boss characters. And the reason for this is, well... Let's start with Goror, the half-human dragon. You can move him left, right, and jump upwards. But trying to make him jump forward or backwards, well... It would actually make your game crash. And trying to throw a little punch, well... As you can see, his fist is there, but the rest of his body is gone. But that's not going to stop your opponent from trying. They can try to hurt you all they want, but the only thing they can really do is wait for the timer to run out and claim the victory. So now, let me show you guys that something I found interesting that I did out of curiosity. I decided to add an extra line of code that will allow me to fight Goro when I start up the game. And what it turns out is that Goro is not allowed to touch himself or else the game will crash. So now it's time to check out the last character, Shane Shung. Now for the most part, this character is kind of in the same boat with Goro, but he is slightly more playable while also being a bit more broken. And this will of course sound a bit confusing, but let me explain. Well first, just like Gore, the game will crash if you make a character jump forward or backwards. However, when you play as Gore, he's completely invisible unless you have him fighting against himself. But with Chain Sung, right out the gate, He's a glitched up mess. Now, there is a, a way to fix this, but it requires you to put in the extra code called Start the Match with Chain Sung. So now, he's a bit more noticeable, but still a glitched up mess. He can go back to normal, but that requires your opponent to transform and hopefully hurt you enough to make your character look a bit more normal. But he will revert back the way he was once the opponent transforms back. Now, of course, I did mention that Shane Sung is slightly bit more playable, and that because he can actually throw in a short punch. But doing it multiple times very fast will freeze the game. And that is the video. Um, and to summarize the whole thing, Reptile. Completely playable, but not 100%, but mostly playable. Noob Cybot. He is 100% playable. And Gore and Chainsung, well... You can move him, you can play him, but 80% of the time, they are completely broken. So, that said, thank you so much for watching. This is the Video Game Hunter. And until next time, goodbye.